We're going to get started here. Uh, what my goal is today is to kind of take you through a lot of the changes that just occurred with LinkedIn over the last few weeks. Um, I have been getting quite a few questions uh, via email, so I'm going to address those. We'll call them FAQs. Try to walk you through a few of the problems people have been having and just try to show you some solutions. Uh, and then I'll take you through a few of my kind of expert tips um, that'll hopefully uh, you know get you to the next level and uh, certainly we'll take questions and uh, call it a week maybe so <clears throat> let me kind of start off by um, just going through a few you know I guess um, going through a few key points and then we'll I'll address some of these FAQs um, so one of the things that's really been happening with LinkedIn obviously um, is it's being pushed in, in many different ways and um, you know, one of the most common things I hear from people that don't use LinkedIn is, is I'll hear, well, yes, I did set up a profile, um, but I don't know what happened to it, and honestly, it's not, it's not valuable to me, so I'm not concerned with it. And I, I think what the problem is, for anyone on this call who's kind of what we'll call a beginner, the problem is, is once you get started, there's kind of no turning back. And what that means is, is if you do create a LinkedIn profile, it's important that it's set up to be just as professional as a professional resume. You know, it, you should consider it something that is going to be found by potential clients and people doing background checks on you. So kind of here's a quick example. If I go into Google uh, and I type in my name, you'll see the first thing that comes up is my LinkedIn profile. Is that done because I want it to come up first? No, it's not. It's because LinkedIn has become such a powerful website now. I guess the best way to think of it is, is Google ranks every website 1 to 10 billion, you know, depending on how many they are. LinkedIn is actually ranked number 6 in the world. Okay, so if you have a sub profile with LinkedIn, it's very, very likely it's going to be the number one search result for your name if someone, you know, if someone Googles it or Yahoo's it or whatever. So my point is this. If you are one of these agents that set up a profile, you're not sure if you did, you're not, you don't remember if it looks good, I would suggest going on to LinkedIn and, um, you know, do the forgot password, find out what your login information is, and either set it up appropriately, which I'll try to help you with in a few minutes, or delete it. Because it actually could be doing more harm than good for you. So let me kind of take you through a few of the changes, and I'll try to give you some advice on how you would set up everything. Um, but I, I think the first thing that's very important that I see a lot of people kind of goofing up on um, is making sure that when you go into your profile, and you'll notice I'm up in the upper left-hand corner, that you click the View Profile button. And what that allows you to do is, is it allows you to see your profile like everyone else sees it. And I think a lot of agents I run into they're used to looking at their profile in edit, in the edit mode. So you'll see right now I'm in the edit mode. They don't get a feel for how the consumer is looking at it. So I guess my point is, is go in there today, click on view profile, kind of scroll down and say, okay, this is what people see. This is how I'm being judged. Does this make sense? Is it helping my agency? Is it helping my brand? Um, so one of the things, and I, I've always suggested this, is to make sure that your contact info is really strong and it really makes sense. So you'll see there's a little button right here uh, that says contact info. When I click on that, you know, I have it set up to, um, you know, really have some call to action. You'll see I list my email address, my phone number, I have all my websites, and not only do I have my websites, the websites are descriptive. They actually say insurance agent technology, free social media insight, I get more clicks because of that. And I guess my point is, is if you just have the default settings, it's just going to say company website. You really should change it. Um, you should really change it so it's more enticing to click on. You should really make sure you have an email address there. You should really make sure you have a phone number. The most common kind of fight back I get is, is I don't want my email address found by other people. I'm going to get spammed. You know, in my opinion, I would take five people spamming me for one new client, you know. Um, you're never going to get that client if you don't give them a way to contact you. So I would suggest having the email address there um, and certainly having your website customized. How do you customize your website? Just click on Profile, Edit Profile, and scroll down here to the Contact Info. 
uh, and just uh, click on whoop, sorry guys just click on edit contact info and you'll see a little pencil next to the website click on it and you want to select whoop, it's going to probably say company website that's what it defaults as just scroll down to other and select that and that allows you to put a keyword in there and it allows you to uh, customize your website the next thing I see a lot of agencies not doing for whatever reason um, and bear with me here um, is their summary is very poor this should be you know four to eight sentences that really tells the consumer what you do and why you're different and so many agencies I look at they'll say I sell life health auto home and business and that's it that's their summary you got to kind of explain and um, create a little insight this stuff is absolutely search engine optimized people search for it you don't have to write a book keep it at two or three paragraphs at the most but have some have something there that's creative very important and you know if you don't have anything there something has to go there is my point um, so let me kind of answer a few of these questions I've been getting and um, we'll kind of keep going so one of the first questions I've gotten is is Ken I've gotten a few complaints that when people are trying to find me on LinkedIn that they only can see my picture and they can't see my profile why is that well the reason that's happening is because in your LinkedIn account you have your LinkedIn account you have very high security settings on your account prohibiting people who aren't connected to you or maybe even connected to you from actually seeing all that stuff so to fix it you'll see in the upper right hand corner is your name click the drop down and hit settings okay and it's going to kind of pull up of course it's making me log in um, you need to then once you go in here and log in, um, you need to go down to the bottom here where it says privacy controls. And um, you'll see that you want to you be able to click on um, select what others see when you've you know, viewed their, pro no, sorry, wrong one. Select who can see, sorry, change your profile, photo, and visibility. That's what you want to click on. So you want to click on it and make sure that everyone is selected okay that's a common thing I think it defaults to my connections you want to choose it to everyone um, it's going to obviously give you uh, um, it's going to give you more visibility uh, so I see a question that came in I'll answer it now um, if someone gives us a recommendation on LinkedIn is it expected generally are you expected generally to give one back uh, good question um, you know I, I think at the end of the day if you can give one back that's a, a true honest you know recommendation and like use you know go ahead and do that I, I guess here's my thought process you may be their agent of record for their company but you may not use their company so I, I wouldn't just write up a recommendation oh I know Bob he's a great guy I'm his insurance broker but if you actually use Bob's um, you know his building company and he, he built your kitchen well then you'd write a recommendation I would just say common sense uh, if you write a recommendation, you want to, you know, you want to return the favor in a very professional manner. So that would be my, uh, that would be my suggestion. So next common question I've been getting is, is, well, Ken, I'm getting a lot of emails saying people are endorsing me. What does that mean, and why is that happening? Good question. Well, as I mentioned, LinkedIn really, um, you know, really changed their profile a little bit over the last few months, and one of the things they've added are these skills and expertise. And you're looking right now at mine, and you'll see I only have four listed. I got social media marketing, insurance, web design, lead generation. And you'll see that 81 people have actually endorsed me for social social media marketing, 75 for insurance, 32 for web design. So my point is, is if somebody comes to my profile and clicks on, you know, endorse Ken for social media marketing, boom, I get an email too. Okay, so. There's, it's kind of a three-folded answer. Step one is to go to profile, edit profile, and to make sure that you actually have your skills listed. And if I kind of scroll down here, um, you'll see them. And there's a little pencil here. You click on it. You can add as many skills as you want. One of the, I guess you can add actually up to 50 skills. My tip and my suggestion is don't have more than maybe five, five to ten at the most. The more skills you list will actually hurt you because you'll get less people endorsing you 
And that's actually going to hurt your ranking, believe it or not. So tip one, keep your skills minimized. Tip two, you don't want to be general with your skills. If you don't want to say health insurance, you kind of want to say, you want to be more detailed. And here's why. One of the newest fads on LinkedIn is you'll see under more is a thing that says skills and expertise. And what's happening is consumers can go here and they can type in, I don't know, let's just put in farm insurance. They can put that in and actually search for people who have these skills and the people that have the most endorsements, they come up first. Okay, so you know, here's Andy Bruneman who uh, obviously offers farm insurance. So my point is this, people are now searching through these skills and endorsements. Um, you would think in your mind, oh, well I want to list 50 of them then so people will find me. But the reality is, is you won't, even though people may find you, you may be listed as you know, number one million. So in order to get higher in the searches, it's better to get endorsed more and have little, you know, have less skills to actually, you know, get endorsed. So hopefully I didn't confuse you there, but I think my point is, is go in, list between, you know, five and seven skills. Don't make them generic. Make them very pinpointed. That way, if people type that in, you have a higher probability of being found. And it also helps what's called your social activity ranking. The more of those you get. So long story short, it's a new feature that you should have in there. Um, and when people are endorsing you, LinkedIn is sending you a message to obviously um, to alert you of that. So it's a cool, pretty it's a pretty cool feature. It's actually helped me get a lot of clients. Um, I've seen a few other agents, uh, specifically you know who are really focused on the commercial world. I have one guy who's really uh, uh, involved, I guess, with wholesalers, uh, cigarette vendors, and he's got all that on his LinkedIn profile. He's doing great with it. Um, so the more specific you can be, the better. Um, definitely a cool little tip there. Um, anyway, uh, so a few questions coming in on that. Uh, Ken, um, what do you mean by being specific? Um, you know, I, again, I guess my thought is, is if you are selling auto insurance or you're selling, um, you know, homeowners insurance, maybe you want to say, you know, um, Texas. Uh, auto insurance specialist or something like that, something that's a little more detailed, a little bit more searchable on the internet. Um, obviously there's, I think at this point the numbers I've seen is 1.7 million insurance professionals using LinkedIn in the United States. I mean how many of those 1.7 million have auto insurance as their expertise? I bet you like 400,000, 500,000. So you, you have to realize that and try to compete against it I guess is the best way to put it. Um, Next, I see another question here, Ken. Uh, what's the story with groups, and should we start one? Um, well, you know what? That's a good question. I, I've done webinars in the past about it, and maybe I'll do one in the future. You'll see up here on your tab is a button that says Groups, and you can certainly create a group. Uh, biggest challenge with creating a group, though, is that everyone has now gone down that road. Um, and in order for you to be successful with that group, you really need to have people who are going into the group area and are searching for what you're doing. I have one client that's really done a great job. He's created a group uh, very specific to Southern California healthcare reform. And he's got it up to now about 700 people in the group, which is pretty good considering he didn't know any of them and they joined just by searching for it. So I mean that's one example of an agency that's done something. They've gone in, they've created a group that's for a specific topic. But more importantly, this guy who's got this healthcare reform group, you know, every day he's posting stuff and updating the group members. I mean, that's that's what makes the group valuable is that people are actually going in there and they're getting something. And I think that that's where a lot of my, you know, that's where I've seen a lot of people fail. That they're excited to create a group, but they really don't have any content that they can consistently, um, you know, um, provide in the group to get members to come to it. So. Basically, long story short, with these groups, the beauty of it is you can create it. People can search for what you you know what you're offering, and they'll join your group, which allows you to basically solicit them, communicate to them at will. And um, you know, obviously, I've created a group called Social Media Tips and Strategy. I'm almost up to four thousand members. Um, it's been a vital pipeline um, for for my company. 
Um, and I've seen a lot of agents kind of, you know, like I said, have groups of their niche or their specialty and get it up to in the thousands of members. But it takes time and, like I said, it takes creative energy to come up with that content. So, guys, listen, I appreciate your time today. Um, I think, uh, you know, in the future we're going to have a few more LinkedIn ones uh, that will be a little bit more detailed. Um, obviously, we could sit here and talk for eight hours on this stuff. My goal today was just to give you a few tips, and I think I've done that. So long story short, go in there. Make sure your profile is as professional as your resume um, because people will hold it against you if it you know, looks kind of crummy. Um, and uh, you know, get those skills in there, and um, you'll be 